You may recognize them as the thing that, if you understand their body language, are horrible actors. Like this one in the real-life ghost hunting show, Paranormal Home Inspectors. Yeah, the cat seems really spooked. Yeah. Well, uh, end the investigation. I like how they chose to highlight the least upset cat I've ever seen to be in a room with, like, five strangers. Also, isn't it weird that the houses with mysterious footsteps all seem to have pets? Anyway, cats are great, so let's talk about them. In a way that's totally not an excuse to do less thinking this week because I picked Civ 5 back up and one more turn is never one more turn. It's a lie and you know it. Ahem. The origin of cats. Cats, unlike dogs, weren't really a human creation. Humans tamed wolves, or other canines, and selectively bred dogs into varying shapes, sizes, depending on need. Cold climate needs a dog that likes the cold. By the way, a Siberian husky left out in the snow is not necessarily abused. They like the cold, and if you live in Florida, they can be in warm weather quite well, but prefer colder temperatures in the 70s and can be comfortable much lower. Also, the dachshund wasn't bred because it looked funny, it was an intentional hunting breed used to hunt and flush out burrowing animals. As such, the dachshund needs exercise to keep them trim and healthy. Also, that thing that dogs do with their eyebrows? Wolves can't do that. That entire muscle structure exists solely for the purpose of manipulating humans emotionally. But cats aren't really like that. They've changed very little from their wild counterparts. Despite being semi-social animals, they can survive just fine on their own. Whereas with dogs, if all of humanity disappeared, a huge amount of breeds simply wouldn't survive. The reason is that the cats sort of domesticated themselves, and they fit all the needs they needed to already. They only needed to become a bit more cuddly, which is a little more behavioral than genetic, as well as utilizing a form of communication that humans can pick up on, as most sounds that they make or body language is lost on most humans, so they meow at us. They make noises at humans that they know will garner reactions, even though they wouldn't make that noise to their own kind. Which is an interesting thing to think about, because that means depending on the species they are attempting to communicate with, cats will change how they attempt to communicate. Your cat is bilingual. Anyway, you see, when humans invented agriculture, they started storing food for winter and shortages. A lot of that was grain. You know what loves those things? Mice, rats, birds, and plenty of other pets that seem to thrive where larger competition would leave our civilizations alone. So in come cats. Dry grain isn't for them, and they can't easily get into meat stores through small holes like mice can, but they do love the pests that we draw. So they move in, kill the pests, eating some of them, and use us for shelter. Humans with similar social needs and an insatiable need to pet cuddly things, kind of wonder how many human ancestors died because of that urge to pet things. Think about it, we want a lot of similar similar things. Humans need some social interaction or they go insane. They need some level of mine or a place to feel comfortable in as theirs. Cats need very little changes to fit the needs they already had to fill in our society and follow all of those exact same things. They need some social interaction, they need some level of space that is considered theirs to feel comfortable, and they need shelter to stay safe. The point is that cats came in pretty much as is, and apart from some issues with one or two breeds, are perfectly viable animals on their own. Cats are not so much a domesticated species as they are a tiny tame predator that you keep inside of your house. So much in fact that stray cat gangs are a concerning threat to ecosystems. But we'll get to that later. For now let's talk about those breeds. Depending on breed and personality, they can be just as much work to take care of, or more, as a dog. Some breeds train easier, some like to be held more, some, due to size, aren't really a pickup kitty. Though there are some show breeds that have notable issues. Persians can have breathing issues much like flat-faced dog breeds, and Scottish fold cats can't be bred with one another as the fold in their ears is due to a cartilage mutation that when compounded by breeding them together can lead to major joint issues. 
Other than a few though, as previously mentioned, cat breeds are majorly more viable than dogs. Your Shih Tzu would die out in two generations tops if humanity wasn't there. One of my favorite breeds of cat, the Lycoi, affectionately named the Werewolf Cat, was a completely natural mutation, not the result of an intentional breed. A bit weird looking with their lack of an undercoat of fur, but I love them. Also, the Sphinx Cat originated in Toronto, Canada, not Egypt. Think about that, people. It has no fur. Cats can get sunburned on places where their fur is thin. A hairless cat in a heavily sunned country with less dense forests and a large desert percentage would be a short-lived breed. And there are a huge amount of great breeds in cats, most of which will live fine inside as well as out. Speaking of breeds and genetics, Calicos are almost all female as the color patterning is linked to the X chromosome and the male calicos require the very rare XXY mutation. That's not super important to breeding, but it is worth noting there's a reason why male calicos go for easily five digit numbers with a dollar sign. Cats are also very smart. They can recognize their name and even be trained if you know what you're doing. I even saw a cat using one of those talking button boards with a frighteningly fast learning curve. Then a video compilation of owners filming themselves with their cat and applying the filter that makes you look like a cat. The reaction of the cats becoming surprised and seeming to compare react to the person next to them would imply that they have the capacity to understand that the image on screen is them and their owner, which is another frightening development as most large wild cats fail the mirror test to see if they can recognize reflections as themselves. Though ants pass that test and dogs fail it, so I'm not sure if the mirror test says anything anymore. I'm not sure if we want cats to be getting that smart, but we're moving there anyway. Also, that slow blink thing that cats do to show trust? Tigers do that too. Anyway, my next and semi-important topic, cats should be inside. Not only because they live twice as long on average when they're inside, but because of our next topic, Cats are monsters. They are the most horrifying thing a small creature could ever see in a human inhabited area, and that includes humans. They kill easily three times what they eat, they offer some as gifts to the group, which is the family that adopted them, and the others they just play with until it's not fun anymore, which is when it's so injured that it can't move anymore or dead. But that's not really their fault. They have a very competitive hunting streak because humanity would care for the best hunters, and this wouldn't normally impact the local wildlife because they're not really supposed to be so many of them. They may torture and kill an insane amount of wildlife, but the reason they have multiple kittens is because the high mortality rate of wild cats. With a safe place to go back to every night, human civilization pushing a lot of the predators that would target them out of the area, they can breed and hunt with impunity. They live longer inside and you should 100% spay and neuter outdoor cats, but the increasing population has driven bird species to near extinction. And as said before, they might be getting smarter, so maybe it's important to make sure that humans at least outnumber them. And, and also because at one point they genetically engineered their cats to give them opposable thumbs. Yes, once we could open up our own tuna cans. That was pretty much that for the human race. But then there's the people who argue against cats being outside, nearby, because they eat the birds coming to their bird feeder. Which is stupid because these people are helping cats disrupt bird population by training the birds to do something counter to survival. Teaching birds to return to an open, observable place for food every day is terrible as a survival tactic. They'll become dependent on you. You didn't put up a bird feeder, you put up a cat and hawk feeder with extra steps. So there you have it. Cats! Oh god damn it! I got it all video without showing an anime cat girl. But yeah, cats. If you want to know more about random animal trivia and things you didn't want to know about blue whales, check out Casual Geographic on YouTube and many other places that he exists. He's even got a book coming out that I'm gonna buy because he makes the knowledge that an elephant can pick things up with its dick seem less weird to know now that I can say I didn't look it up. This dude on the internet did. I only know it because he told me. But do you like cats? Let me know in the comments as you like, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. Though if you subscribe over this video, you're probably going to be really confused when I go back to talking about media. But if you don't like cats because you're a horrible person or held some grudge against the whole species because of a bad experience because you're a horrible person, then you too can go down to the comments and be entertainingly wrong. Dirt. Angry.